Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel, we talk about tools and tips for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. In today's video, we're going to talk about developing a marketing strategy for selling puppies. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. Okay, the first thing I want to talk to you about is where to list your puppies. Now folks, everyone is online these days. Uh, people used to put ads in newspapers and uh, put up postings on public message boards in the supermarket, that kind of thing, but those days are gone. Every, everybody's online. Uh, I, there, there's a lot of different ways to do this, um, and you can get into the ins and outs of how this person does it or that person does it and then debate those things. I'm not going there. I'm going to tell you what I do and what works for me, and you can use that information to help you with your decision. So here's what I do to sell puppies. Now we use puppyfine.com, puppyfine.com. That's where I list my puppies. Now eventually your referral business will get to a point where you don't need to list your puppies anymore. Um, uh, you'll have enough repeat business and enough people talking about your dogs to where they'll be contacting you because a friend of a friend told them where they got their dog and they'll be signing up for litters that aren't even conceived yet. And I, I know for a fact that happens because I'm in line to get a dog with that kind of a breeder right now uh, to bring one into to my inventory. Uh, so that's the goal, but I'm not there yet. So like most people, we're going to do listings online. Puppyfind.com is where we're going. I'm not going to spend time in this video showing you how to set up a puppy find listing. They're real super simple. Uh, they, it's fill in the blanks once you get started. Uh, I would encourage you to go with the paid subscription. It's $19.95 a month and you get full access to the site and your customers get full access to your contact information and you want that. It's a small price to pay. Uh, to basically have a business business platform to move your puppies on. So puppyfind.com um, and that starts with taking a picture of your puppy um, and wait till their eyes are open, they're after two weeks old and then do it. Puppyfind doesn't want you to list dogs that, that aren't born yet or they don't want you to list full litters. A lot of people try to do that. Uh, give your puppy a name instead of just black collar or something like that. Give them a name. If it's a boy, call them something like Diesel or or, or whatever you're going to call them. And you get them listed um, with, with a picture with their eyes open. And then just fill in the blanks. Uh, they'll walk you through that and it'll include your contact information. Now, when you go to puppyfind.com, you can also do some research here. Look at what other people are selling. You're going to find your breed there and take a look at the way people are, are wording their descriptions and kind of get a feel for the way these people like to list their dogs. What they say in the comments about the breeder as well. Uh, pricing information. You can look at what people are selling these dogs for and find comparable dogs to yours as far as how they're going to be registered. Are they AKC or ACA or not registerable, whatever. And you want to be middle of the road on your pricing. Uh, don't set your standard too low. Don't don't tell yourself, oh, I'm brand new, so I got to be cheap. Uh, that's actually a red flag for a lot of people. Though. They won't take you seriously. Uh, and you don't want to be at the top of the price structure either. Uh, that's that's typically uh, people that are, you know, have show dogs and, and things of this nature. Um, be middle of the road somewhere. Take a look at what other people are selling these dogs for and, and be somewhere in the middle. And you'll find that, at least in the beginning, that'll work out pretty good for you. Okay, the second thing I want to talk to you about is you're going to need a place where you can put up pictures and videos of your dogs. People want to see these things. They always want to see a picture. They love to see a video. Video is in. It's just where it's at. People used to just want pictures. Now they want to see some video. I want you to consider learning how to make basic YouTube videos. Uh, one of my biggest dog gurus once said on video uh, that if you're not using YouTube to sell puppies, you should be. And I happen to agree with that. 
Uh, and you might think, well, man, I don't know how to make a YouTube video. Um, I'm right there with you. I, I used to not know how to make a YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, the folks over at Think Media are great at teaching this. Heather Torres has a wonderful video on how to do a, a YouTube video start to finish with everything in it with a smartphone. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy camera and whatnot. It's not necessary. I'll put a link in the description to her video about how to make a YouTube video. And I think you'll get a lot out of that. All right, I'm glad everybody's hanging out and learning about developing a marketing plan for dogs. And do us a favor, if you're getting value from this video, hit that like button. It sure does help out quite a bit. And if you want to support our channel, we've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can stop in and check out a hoodie or a coffee mug. And thanks in advance for doing that. I do weekly puppy update videos for all my litters. Uh, if you look in my playlist, for instance, Rose, Sam and Rosie's second litter, you'll see them. Week one, week two, week three, uh, one when they're even born. But at least a weekly puppy update video. And you can upload this to YouTube. And I'm going to talk to you about starting a Facebook fan page for your dogs as well. And you can upload the exact same video to your Facebook page. So it's not like you have to make two videos. You don't. You upload, you make one and you upload it to both platforms. It's real simple. Uh, so you have pictures being uploaded, videos being uploaded. And this gives people lots of eye candy when they're picking out a puppy. Now, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You can take a good close look at how I make my puppy videos and just do the same thing or something similar. I, I, I don't mind. You can use my exact format if you want to uh, until you figure out your own. What I can tell you is that it works, okay? It's simple and it works. It, it gets dogs sold. That's what it does. Now, you're gonna wanna do, when we're talking about videos, you're gonna want to do a video where you introduce your puppies to everybody. Uh, we do this at the first bath video at four weeks. Um, and we'll give them a name and we'll give them a collar color. Um, I literally printed out a name of popular male dog names and popular female dog names off the internet. And we just run the list, every, every litter. Uh, and, and, you, and you can just move through it and weed out the ones that, you know, maybe you don't like or whatever. But you also give them a collar. So now instead of puppy number five, you've got Charlie, and Charlie has a blue collar, or you've got Daisy, and Daisy has a pink collar, and you, you, you start to sell people an experience at this point. They're not just a number now, they're a name, and they've got a collar, so that when they see them on video, when you're doing your weekly puppy videos, they'll be able to spot the dog that they're thinking about, or the dog that maybe they've got a deposit in on. And I'm not kidding you, we've had people come to look at the dogs and to look at the puppies and to buy puppies. We've had families come and the kids know all the dogs' names already. They're like, oh, there's Charlie and there's Daisy. It's an experience. Uh, now, if you've ever taken a marketing class, you'll know that selling people a product is one thing, selling people an experience is another. You give them lots of videos to watch, pictures to look at, names to think about, colors to think about. They can do their homework now. They can do their research. They can show it to their family, their, their significant other, their kids. You're selling an experience at this point. And at week eight, when they're all available, boom, they're gone. Crickets chirping. It's like, wow, where did all my dogs go? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk for a minute about a Facebook business page. Uh, it, some people call it a fan page. Um, if you've got a Facebook account, anybody can do this. It's free. Uh, just follow the links on Facebook to, to start a business page. And um, for entertainment value is fine when they ask you for a category. Um, if you're wondering how that looks, just take a look at mine. Uh, we've got a Facebook fan page under Must Love Labs. Just do Must Love Labs search on Facebook and look for my logo and you see it. Or you can click on the link in the About section of my YouTube channel and that'll take you there. Uh, and while we're on that topic, once you get your fan page set up, you put a link on your fan page in the About section to your YouTube channel. And on your YouTube channel, you put a link in the About section to your Facebook page. And this way, you're cross-connecting. People can, people can come in from, from any direction and find you. 
you can go on to fiverr.com and get somebody to make you a logo. My Must Love Labs logo. Everybody's seen it. That one right there. Yeah. You can have that done on fiverr.com for 20 bucks. Uh, and for a little bit more than that, you can have it animated if you want to. But then it's yours. You own it. Um, copyright laws, laws apply. Uh, and you can use that logo for your Facebook page, for your YouTube channel, and then later on a PayPal invoice. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Talking about that Facebook page, you want to set up photo albums on your Facebook page. You want to have an album for your parent dogs. Um, you're probably going to at least have a mama dog. Maybe you'll have a resident stud. Uh, if you don't have a resident stud, if you outsource that, you can still get a picture of that dog from whoever you did business with and list that on your page uh, as the sire for your pups. That's fine. Uh, so you want a photo album for your parent dogs, and then you can start a photo album for your puppies. And you'll also get testimonials. People that buy puppies from you, six months later, they'll send you a picture uh, with an update saying, you know, oh, he's doing great. He weighs 48 pounds at the vet now, and we're glad we got him. That's a testimonial, and you can put that in a photo album on your page as well. Take a look at my page and look at how we structured it. You'll see there's the parent dogs. There's also a section for keeping up with our puppies. And those are the dogs that we've sold that we're getting pictures back on, you know, six months later, a year later. Uh, and it all, it adds up to an information picture. And what happens is somebody contacts you off a of puppy find and they want to know more information. You send them to your Facebook page. Answer whatever immediate question that they have. Usually it's, is this dog still available? Yes, he or she is. And take a look at our Facebook, Facebook page where we've got plenty of pictures of the parent dogs and videos of the puppies. We do weekly updates. If you have any more questions, email me back. Now you've sent them to your Facebook page and you will eliminate a ton of back and forth communication, one piece of information at a time for each person that inquires, you can bypass a big portion of that by sending people to your Facebook page where most of what they're looking for is there in the pictures in the videos. With that Facebook page, you want to get good at uploading cute puppy pictures and cool dog pictures of your breed on a regular basis. You can find them out on the internet. You can take them of your own dogs. You can do both. Um, it's free and easy but it keeps the conversation going on your fan page. Now, you want to get good at taking cute puppy pictures, okay? The pictures in the videos are what sell the dogs. Uh, so practice, you know, I'll, I'll put some pictures up here in just a second to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But practice taking cute puppy pictures. Uh, it, it'll put money in your pocket. When you're on your Facebook page, and you put up a listing, like for instance, your puppyfind.com listing, you can put a listing, puppyfind will give you a link straight to Diesel's puppy listing. And you can put that on your Facebook fan page and let everybody know that Diesel's for sale there. But never, ever, ever discuss price or sales specifics in a public post on Facebook. It's a violation of the terms of service to sell live animals on Facebook. Now, people can message you on Messenger in private message. That's fine. You can talk about pricing and, and whatever in, the, in that environment. But don't do it out on the public post. You'll, you'll get in trouble with Facebook. So your Facebook fan page ends up being your go-to page for most of your inquiries about the puppies. And that's what it's there for. Uh, it, it, it will, it, for me anyways, it's ended up being my biggest tool for selling puppies is the Facebook fan page. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an information gathering spot for photos and videos that's, that's really unmatched anywhere else. Okay, so if your marketing efforts have gone well and uh, people looked at your puppy find listing and, uh, and after asking you some questions and looking at pictures and videos, they usually at that point when you hear back from somebody, it's uh, you know, how can I reserve one is what they want to know. You know, how do I get one from you? How do I buy one from you? And... Um, I use PayPal for puppy deposits. That's the easiest way I've found to handle deposits. Typically when I'm selling dogs, I've got a $250 non-refundable deposit to hold a dog. And I let people know that in the PayPal invoice. It's $250, it's non-refundable. And that covers me for dogs that are selling in the 
uh, you know, eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollar range. Uh, it's your business. Do it however you want. Two hundred and fifty dollars is a good round number. The non-refundable part comes from these people have asked you to take your dog off the market, take it off the shelf, so to speak, and stop trying to sell it and hold it for them. Okay, during the prime selling season, the first eight weeks. Um, so th the price for doing that is two hundred and fifty dollars. This weeds out the tire kickers. Okay, nobody that's that's on the fence or doing the uh, I don't know maybe thing. I'll hold one just in case. Anybody that's being that way isn't going to give you two hundred and fifty dollars on a non-refundable pet deposit. Okay, these are serious inquiries at this point. These people plan on coming and picking up a dog from you, and that's what you want. Now, if you're going to ship a dog, if you plan on shipping one, some people ship them, some don't. Uh, I do. I've found that I can ship a dog anywhere in the lower 48 for about $450 shipping and handling. And I just know that there's a service right here in Missouri that helps with that. They have relationships with the airlines and they help you get a dog on the plane. Uh, there's veterinary forms that have to be filled out and your vet's going to charge you a little bit that for that too. That's like $25. Uh, for a little bit of a more stringent physical before a dog can fly. Dogs can't fly until they're eight weeks old, so that all works out. Um, anyways, about $450 shipping and handling. I add that to the price. I tell them that up front. This much for the dog, this much for shipping and handling. And make sure that you get paid in full all the money before you put your dog on a plane or before you hand your dog off to somebody and let them drive away with it, okay? You must be holding all the money, people. Now, when I send somebody an invoice, $250 non-refundable pet deposit, balance due prior to shipping or prior to pickup via cash, via cash or cashier's check, okay? cash or cashier's check. I'm not using PayPal for the bulk of the purchase, just for the deposit. Trust me on this. There's a way for people to scam you if they really want to be that way, and it happens. So don't set yourself up for it. Take deposits with PayPal. That's what I do. It's, it's easy. It's real easy. But let people know up front what the balance is going to be, and that they're going to need to settle that up with you, either with cash when they come by your house, or uh, they can mail you a cashier's check, uh, and you want to deposit that and check with your bank to make sure the funds are available before you put that dog on a plane or hand it off to a prospective owner. Um, if they hand it to you in person when they come to pick up the dog, that's probably fine. Uh, but no personal checks is what I'm getting at. Nobody does money orders anymore, and I wouldn't take any personal checks or business checks. Uh, there's just way too many more modern and convenient ways uh, to deal with things and cash is always king. Yeah, cash is best. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is being a communicator. My biggest frustration with breeders that I've dealt with is their their lack of communication. These people that won't return phone calls, won't return emails, and then when you do finally get a hold of them days or even a week later or something, uh, they, they, they want to tell you about how busy they are and start giving you excuses. Well, we're all busy. You know, we've all got the same 24 hours and how you use it is up to you, but we're all busy. Uh, so if you're too busy to return an email from me, or if you're too busy to answer your phone, then maybe you're too busy to do business with me. Uh, I, I really have walked away from deals like that just because people wouldn't communicate with me. That's a red flag. It makes me start wondering, why won't this person communicate with me? Okay, and that's that really is from a customer's perspective because I was the customer during that transaction. So I learned from that and I don't want to put any of my customers in that situation. Be a good communicator. Be open. Be easy to get a hold of and be as quick as you can. We're all busy. We all get that, but don't leave people hanging. It, you, you never want to mislead people. Okay? Be open, be fair, be honest, and tell the truth. Okay, You have to tell people the truth. Whatever it is, maybe it even stings a little bit. Maybe things didn't go the way you wanted it to, whatever. But tell people the truth. You never have to worry about what you said 
if you told someone the truth. You don't have to worry about it. Just go there. We've all got our big boy pants on, our big girl pants on. We can handle the truth, but we have to know what it is. I mentioned before selling people an experience and think about doing that when you're dealing with people, about selling them an experience. Let them come and visit the dogs. Puppyfind.com actually coaches people on how to buy a dog and the other sites do too. Uh, and they tell them to, if they're close enough, to see if they can come out and visit. See the mama dogs, see you, see where these dogs are being raised at, meet the dogs, maybe even pick one out while they're there. And you wanna be open to that. Uh, if you're not going to be open to that, then you're going to be turning away business and people will start to wonder about you. So that's the nature of the dog business. Okay, so let's take a look at the process here. You're gonna put up a listing on Puppy Find and you're gonna share a link to that listing on your Facebook business page. You're gonna put in the breed that you're selling, the price that you're asking for it, uh, some light information about you and when the dog is gonna be available for pickup, when it can go to its forever home. That's typically gonna be eight weeks. Customers are gonna to respond to that listing by asking you for more information. Uh, you'll get an email from PuppyFind via them uh, and answer any immediate questions they might have and then direct them to the, your, your Facebook page where they can go and look at the pictures and watch the videos. At this point, when you hear back from people, it's typically because they wanna reserve a dog. Uh, you answer any final questions they might have um, and then you're gonna send them an invoice if they wanna reserve one via PayPal uh, non-refundable and you can disclose whatever other uh, conditions you might have in there. Uh, we usually give people about two weeks to come pick one up uh, after they're ready. So they're ready in eight weeks. Uh, I really need them picked up by the end of the 10th week or thereabouts, whatever works out best for everybody. I try to give people a couple of weekends uh, after the dogs are ready because most people are going to be available to come and do that kind of thing over the weekend. You want to be sure and give people weekly updates. On, on social media, on Facebook. And as the dogs get older, uh, take some more pictures of them and you can freshen up your listing on Puppy Find. There's room for like five pictures there, I believe. So uh, uh, as the dogs start to get a little older, you can take newer, fresher pictures and put them up. People will appreciate that. And lastly, uh, don't forget to make sure that you're holding all the money before you ship or deliver one of your dogs. Well, that wraps up today's video for how to develop a marketing strategy for selling your puppies. I hope you got value from it. Feel free to leave comments. If there's something else you'd like to hear us discuss or a question that you have, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, sure do appreciate you watching Must Love Labs. You definitely want to hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel because I will be doing more videos on this topic and others as we move forward. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.